I'm joined now by Nick Smith, who is Japan strategist at CLSA in Tokyo. Morning, Nick. Morning to you. So the Bank of Japan meeting uh, today and tomorrow expected to remain on hold after Governor Kuezo Ueda indicated that his ultra-easy monetary policy is going to remain in place until wage gains and inflation are stable and sustainable. Are, are there any signs yet that wage gains and inflation is, is stable and sustainable? Well, I, I think what the, uh, the BOJ insists on missing is that uh, inflation Japan is really related to her to wage gains, which is a simple uh, demographic issue. You just can't print more people. And so the, the labor market is incredibly tight. The working age population shrinking at half a million a year, accelerating to three quarters of a million a year by the end of the, uh, the decade. Um, the unions uh, report 3.7% wage increases they've won. Uh, Kedan Ren, the, uh, the big business lobby, uh, reports 3.9%. Uh, and I think that the BOJ doesn't seem to want to listen to this. But I, I think my experience of 35 years in, in Japan is inflation is always and everywhere a wage phenomenon. Uh, we haven't had inflation before because you print money, drive up prices when wages aren't uh, rising. Or, of course, all you're going to do is... Uh, uh, crush consumption, which is irresponsible. So is, is the Bank of Japan, is the reason why they're doing this, or maybe one of the reasons why they're doing this, is that they're haunted by the fact that before, um, I think on a couple of occasions, didn't they, they started raising rates um, and it all turned out to be too soon. Inflation um, didn't pick up at all. The economy sank back into deflation. Is that part of why they're doing this, that that history is sort of haunting them a little bit? Uh, to be fair, the, the history that should be haunting them is the history of the 1930s, where they, uh, they spent heavily to, to get out of uh, the Depression uh, with the BOJ printing the money, and uh, inflation accelerated quickly to over, uh, over 10% within just a few years. And, of course, ultimately, that financed their entry into uh, to war and... Uh, uh, and um, desperate straits. So they know that since 2009, Japanese government debt has increased by around a half. Uh, and at some stage, you've got to have the, uh, the guts to say enough is enough. We're not printing any more for you. Now, the, uh, a skeptic would say maybe the reason that the, uh, uh, the BOJ uh, is continuing to print is the government wants cheap money because it's going to uh, spend on increased uh, defence spending and uh, and uh, and really interesting um, plan to try and almost pay people to have children. Uh, and it doesn't want to uh, to have to raise taxes to uh, to fund that. Mm, okay. Well, look, let me let me turn our attention to the markets because um, Japan's Nikkei two two five now back to um, July nineteen ninety um, levels above thirty three thousand. People are getting very excited about that. So there is a flip side to that, of course, isn't there? Which is that if we if we're back to where we were in nineteen ninety, um, it, 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 it's a rather pitiful performance since then, I suppose. But at least it, it is the market in focus at the moment. The market is uh, definitely in focus at the moment. The, there are a lot of people trying to find reasons why they shouldn't look at it because they spent decades not looking at it and, and really don't want to do the, uh, the homework. But you look back on the 1990s and say, gosh, I don't know how we managed to flog Japanese stocks there because in a good year, the profits were lousy. In a bad year, the, the uh, corporate Japan was losing money. So you think of Japan in terms of uh, price to 10-year average uh, earnings in sort of Graham and Dodd way. And you go, the, the valuations then were absolutely uh, eye-popping. Mm. Um, but now we're in a situation where we've gone from um, extreme bubble to, uh, to anti-bubble, and Japan is very, very cheap. Uh, and people want to say, uh, I mean, the, the economists, for example, are saying, yes, but the um, the GDP growth rate is still not very good. And uh, uh, you look back on studies that show, I think it's um, Professor Marsh et al. at uh, London Business School showing correlation between uh, economic growth and uh, market performance over, over 100 years of data for 20 countries is slightly negative. But, you know, you wouldn't say, well, I'm not buying, um, not buying Nestle because I don't like the, uh, the Swiss economy. And I'm, I'm not sure that the... Uh, 
uh, same argument doesn't apply to Japan. Mm, but even if prof- profitability is not so good, it can certainly improve, can't it, from here? And that's presumably what's also driving the market. Well, I think that's the uh, the case. I mean, certainly uh, I- I've had the questions aren't things so good that they can't get any better and i say well look at those (laughs) those profit margins they're still absolutely lousy so they absolutely have to get better but the reason that the government's got its focus on this is because it's got its uh vast uh japan's vast pension funds uh with the exception of the uh, government gpif they're all extremely underweight equity which is a dreadful position to be in if you're going from deflation into uh to inflation inflation so they need to get out of bonds into equity and the whole thing has to work so uh, companies have to produce uh, economic returns and they have to share those returns with um with their investors which is what corporate governance reform is all about mm. what, what is also interesting is that um foreign investors who are very disappointed in the chinese markets at the moment and have really been bailing out in their droves uh, are now talking uh, about having an asia x china product just like back in the 1990s we started to see asia x japan people are now calling for asia x china which i presume is as first of all it's a significant shift isn't it um in, in terms of performance expectations but also presumably this is going to benefit japan as well well i think it is I mean, certainly japan is already benefiting from a certain amount of uh, french shoring uh tsmc building uh, a, a plant down in kyushu um Samsung spending a bit there, but uh, there's the, certainly the feeling that um, that uh, investment in Japan would uh, would benefit from from this whole friend shoring issue. So, yes, I think people are looking at uh, Japan in a whole new way, uh, and the question that um, that doesn't get voiced out loud is how much of the uh, the recovery in the Japanese market is a not China trade. Mm. And of course, the other thing is that this uh, the Tokyo Stock Exchange's uh, sort of name and shame campaign. Maybe you could explain for our listeners a little bit more about that who may not be familiar with what the TSE has actually been doing and why that's been so significant. Yeah, it's been uh, obviously Japan is a, a market where broadly half of companies uh, trade below book um, and the incoming uh, CEO of, uh, of the stock exchange, um, uh, Yamazan, has, uh, has come up with a, um, a, a, a plan that says companies that are uh, trading below book must produce a uh, improvement plan for how they should get back above book. Um, and to be honest, a lot of uh, investors have just said trading below book, lots of cash, um, will uh, press them for uh, for share buybacks. Mm. Uh, so almost immediately after um, the announcement, uh, in under two, two weeks after it, Citizen did a uh, 26% share buyback and uh, said in its announcement that the, the G- JPX, uh, the stock exchange uh, move, was the, uh, the trigger for that. And a lot of others have said so since. So Japan is, of course, awash with cash. And uh, there is... Uh, a, a lot of excitement about what can happen to to dividends and buybacks. Now, obviously, uh, CEO uh, Yamaji has been stressing, look, we're looking for something that's sustainable, uh, not a one-off. Uh, mm. But people have said, yeah, 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 but which is the next citizen uh, watch, which is, has been quite amusing to watch. I, I presume then this is almost causing some panic amongst, uh, amongst companies and, and their boards because um, the, the threat is what? That they get delisted if they don't meet these, uh, these targets. No, I think um, the the CEO has has um, repeatedly said, sorry, that, that there's not a, um, a suggesting that you'll get uh, delisted. I mean, this whole thing is about name and shame. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, my first uh, uh, gut feeling was it, it's only complier explained. There's, there's no uh, legal force behind it. And then I was quickly warned, no, no, no. Uh, the name and shame has huge effects in um, in Japan, as in many other uh, uh, Asian nations. So it's it, it's had an effect without the uh, the threat of uh, um, without the threat of stick. But what what is happening is there, there, there's more activist shareholders now um, in Japan, and they're and they're ousting or getting close to ousting some pretty high profile chairmen and CEOs from their from their companies. 
Well, yes. I mean, I think the one that caught everyone's um, eye was uh, Canon, the, uh, mm. the the electronics company, where um, Mitarai, uh, the uh, the CEO there, his support went over a period of two years from ninety percent down to fifty point six. Now, if it got um, one share less than fifty percent, he would have been uh, he would have been out. A lot of people have tried to say, "Ah, oh, this is because he doesn't have enough women on his board." So, no, it's not. It's because operating margins and ROE uh, uh, halved on his watch, and uh, they used to have one point one trillion yen worth of uh, uh, of cash pile, and they spent that on share buybacks, and now that's gone. They go, "Okay, now what are you going to do?" Mm. So how, how sustainable is this rally? Are, are you optimistic that this can continue? And could it even maybe get back to all time highs? I mean, in what, another 5000 points, it's, um, you know, we'll be back at new all time highs for the Nikkei. It would be really nice to get past the, uh, the all time highs just as a, um, a sentiment indicator that with uh, Japan's put that behind it. But um but I think the, Japan's got a lot going for it. I mean, it, it's benefiting from the least dirty shirt syndrome this year in that um, that it's reopening late and uh, that's allowing it to grow when others are, um, are running out of puff from their, uh, their own reopening. Um, so still consumption is recovering. Uh, tourist arrivals are, uh, are picking up. Um, and there's a feeling that that cushions it through the... Um, through any uh, global uh, slowdown, and then Japan's a geared, geared play on uh, on global recovery. So I think that there is uh, more to it in in terms of well, it's certainly not expensive at the moment, especially when you do the uh, required calculation of of uh, uh, comparing its uh, valuations with uh, with the uh, interest rate, which is so very much lower than elsewhere by sort of three hundred basis points or so. Well, fascinating stuff. We're, we're following this closely because it's, uh, it's suddenly Japan's become an exciting go-go market. Thanks very much, Nick, for that. Always a pleasure uh, to talk to you. That's Nick Smith, who is Japan strategist at CLSA in Tokyo.